Well, welcome to part two of the relationship of primary chord movements. In part one, we found out that our primary chords were the one, the four, and the five chord. All the others are considered secondary. Because of that, the primary chords, the one, four, and five, would use capital Roman numerals to depict their numbers, while the uh, two, three, six, and seven chords would use lowercase Roman numerals. We also learned that the tonic chord was the chord that everything came to rest on. It's the stabilizing factor. All the chords revolve around that and come to rest on the tonic chord. So now that we have the tonic chord as a stabilizing factor, let's take a closer look at the five chord. Five chord, of course, has that tritone that wants to push us back to the one chord. When a five goes to a one chord, we give that a name. It's called a cadence. But in this particular case, it's called an authentic cadence. I mean, it is the main cadence. Check out all the sheet music you have at home. You're going to find five going to one all the time. So that is called an authentic cadence when a five goes to a one chord. Of course, many songs have been composed just using a one chord and a five chord. Um, one song that comes to mind is uh, he's got the whole world in his hands. It starts on a one chord, of course. To a five chord. Back to a one chord. To a five. So, two chord wonder. Well, heavens, hundreds of songs have been written with only two chords. That song along with Tom Dooley and of course a lot of children's songs. Four chord in C is F. Well, I just hit it. It just seems to sit there. It doesn't particularly want to do anything. But if you listen closely, there's a feeling that it maybe wants to go back to the one chord. Oh, it's not nearly as strong as that dominant five chord with the tritone which drives us into the tonic. Oh, this is much more subtle. If I put into a second inversion, 5, 1, 3, you can almost feel the pullback. When a 4 approaches a 1, it also is a cadence, but we give it the name of a plagal cadence. You will find that in uh, secular religious music. Uh, it comes across more likely as an all men, as in something like... Um, kind of four move on to a five. Oh yeah, absolutely. Here's my four chord. It doesn't really just hop up to the five chord. But if you look how the movement would be, the third of the four chord falls to the tonic of the five chord, and the fifth falls a half tone to the third of the five chord. So there's my G7 minus the fifth. I'll throw it in there. But again, now I'm on my dominant chord. There's my tritone. So, so I could have a 4, going to a 5. When a 4 goes to 5, we call that a subdominant to a dominant function. 4 chord being the, the uh, subdominant, setting up the 5, 5 driving it home to the 1 chord. If I go back to my little He's got the whole world in his hands. The five chord that comes into the tonic chord, I'm going to split that between the subdominant four to the dominant five and back into the tonic. And it'll sound like this. Four to the five and the five delivering the goods back to the tonic chord one. Well, can the five chord go to the four chord before going to the one? That seems to be the next logical question. Of course, the quick answer is yes, simply because there's no law that says you can't go from one chord to another chord or any other chord for that matter. It's just that when something like that happens, 
you've got to be prepared for what's going to happen to our music. We're going to get a pullback. Here I've got the dominant chord. It's dying to do this. And I'm dropping a four chord. She pulls back, then delivers the goods, obviously, as a plagal cadence. When another chord slips in between a five and a one, we call that an interrupted cadence. Uh, let's go back to, uh, he's got the whole world in his hands, and I'll put in an interrupted cadence followed by a plagal cadence. Let's see how that would work. Four, subdominant to the five, interrupted cadence to the four, and the four resolves back onto the one chord as a plagal cadence. Be sure to check out the secondary movements in another tutorial by me and see how they all interact with the uh, primary chords. Hope you enjoyed a little tutorial and until next time, bye for now.